What's going on, Washington Commanders Nation? It's your boy Rio back with another episode on the Rambling with Rio YouTube channel. I miss y'all. I'm ready to give y'all a full pot and I'm ready to chop it up because we're in the full swing of the NFL offseason. It is NFL Draft Combine Week, which is a huge week for the football obsessed fans like myself, where we like to pick and prod everything we see and we'd like to enjoy the Underwear Olympics a little bit more than we should before we get going in today's content. This episode, as usual, was brought to you by at Wash on the Daily on Instagram. At WSH on the Daily on Instagram. My guy Ray, he's your number one source, number one hub for all things Washington Commanders, football related, rumor related, fan forums, polls, the whole nine. If it has to do with the Washington Commanders, you're going to see it and you're going to see it every day and it's going to be coming to you in waves. At WSH on the daily on Instagram. Go ahead and give my guy Ray a follow. But without further ado, let's pot. How y'all feeling right now? Today is Thursday, March 3rd. It's March already, right? The new league year kicking off in about two weeks, the tampering period where free agents can start negotiating contract. But let's keep it real. We know that the tampering period really starts now. Combine week is like spring break. For NFL executives, coaches, agents, media members, this is where everyone starts to mix and mingle, float out contract negotiations, trade offers, checking on value, shit. It's been it's been said that Washington, we have currently checked in on every team in the league's quarterback situation. We called the goddamn Chiefs and say, yo. What's the value of your quarterback? I'm sure they was like, yo, bless your heart and have a great evening. But I like the fact that we're trying, you know, we've been hearing all off season about how Ron and company want to take this big swing at the quarterback position. The thing is, there's no one pitching to us. There's no one pitching to us. All the speculated names, big names that would come and make a dramatic difference on this team. They're not available at this juncture. It appears the Seahawks and Russell Wilson, they're in this limbo right now where they're trying to out-politician each other. Oh, we're not taking calls. Oh, I don't want to leave. When there's clear, obvious tension between the two, it doesn't look like he's going to get moved this offseason. But you never know. The NFL is a soap opera. Shit could change very fast. Speaking of soap operas, it looks like Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers have a short-term situation that they're working on squeaking out so it looks like he's gonna probably stay in green bay the only significant upgrade superstar quarterback whose fate is now still in question and is deshaun watson it has nothing to do with football while it's why it's still in question but we got some important dates coming up um watson's attorney rusty harden said that they have a deadline of april 1st for the criminal stuff to be decided so that could be all gone away by then, and it's all civil suits and depositions for the civil cases of the 22 accusers of Deshaun Watson. But as of right now, no one's touching him. But on March 22nd, six days after the new league year starts, if he's not off that roster, then, you know what I'm saying, they owe him $37 million to sit at home and exist, to breathe, to be alive. So they may have to make a move on that, but I'm going to be perfectly honest, Washington Commander Faithful. I've tried. I've tried to drink the Kool-Aid. I got my I got my hopes up. I don't think it's in the cards for us, man. I don't think we're going to acquire a significant upgrade veteran via trade or at least a superstar one. Like I'm I'm cool on Garoppolo and Wentz. Like we're going we're going to get to them in a second, but the Wilson Rodgers train has left, and I'm not sure we're the situation that can hop into bed, <laughs> hypothetically speaking, <laughs> not literally with Deshaun Watson. Maybe we shouldn't talk about hopping into bed with Deshaun Watson, but you know what I'm saying. I don't know, but I think he goes to I think he goes to Denver or Philly or somewhere. So it comes back to reality. We have to swallow a pill of reality, and our best option is probably going to be to sign one of these mid-ass free agent quarterbacks 
and draft a guy. And I know who I think that we should draft. And it it looks pretty clear who the consensus top quarterback off the board is going to be. Hey, I'm not trying to say I'm Nostradamus or anything, but I told you when I had my guy Sean McAvoy on the show, we said, look, when the draft process plays itself out, the senior bowl, the combine, when he gets to meet with coaches in the pro day circuit, by the time that's finished, it's going to be without a doubt Malik Willis is going to be the highest coveted quarterback in this class. I've been trying to tell you this for the last couple months. You know what I'm saying? You go, y'all going to learn. Like, y'all going to learn, man. Those traits are different, man. You can even see it in the combine. I would say the sharpest quarterback today was Desmond Ritter. He did the most for his stock because Willis's stock is already skyrocketing. Everyone is impressed with the way he's interviewed. Ron personally compared him to Cam in the way how animated and exciting and intelligent he is. He already understands the language and breaks down the concept. I'm glad to hear our meeting with Good. Ron has compared him to Cam on multiple things. Cam was Ron's franchise quarterback in Carolina until injuries derailed their tenure there, and they both ended up on the outskirts of Charlotte after that happened. But Malik Willis, man. Go all in. Do what you got to do. If you got to trade up, trade up. He look. He's just different. He's just different. Ritter's solid. Pickett's really good. I don't think either of them are going to get much better than they are right now. I think they're already about maxed out. I think their ceiling's already about maxed out. They're going to be solid quarterbacks in the NFL or backups. It's so, no, 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 no. Pickett. Pickett's a starter. Pickett's a long-term starter in the league. Ritter, we'll see. But Malik shit just looks different, bro. It spins out his hand different. He's going to be a top three rushing quarterback off rip. He's built like a freaking Mack truck. We got to stop moving the goalposts for this guy, man. We got to stop moving the goalposts, man. Like, we can, we're questioning everything about him. Like, every quarterback choice in the first round or in the draft period is a crapshoot. There's no such thing as a sure thing, but I'm going to take the guy with the highest upside rather than the guy that's already maxed out in college. Like, dude, nobody wants the girl that peaked in high school. Nobody wants that. They don't want that. You want the potential later in life. But that's just my personal opinion on the matter. You know, Ron and Mayhew spoke to the media. They did their combine pressers. They've been harping home about how we want a veteran, 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 and how we're looking into options. Literally anyone who's put a microphone in front of Ron Rivera's face this off season, he has told them without even being provoked into the question, we will do anything for a quarterback. We will pay whatever it takes. Please football gods send us a fucking quarterback. <laughs> Ron just letting it hang out. Like, bro, he just puts it straight on the table. Like just walks in the room. We need a goddamn quarterback, goddamn it. <laughs> we're we're placing calls far wide. We're we're exhausting all options. So I think they're gonna do everything in their power to try to get one, but it's just not in the cards for us, man. That's just the path that the football gods have us on, man. Right now, we gotta earn it. We're gonna have to get our own guy. We're gonna have to get our own homegrown guy and that's how it's gonna have to that's how it's gonna have to play out for us. But the other options, if we don't get one of the huge names, we got Jimmy G, the most injury prone. I can't make it through a full season through eight years guy I've ever seen, who's solid. Everybody in the world is they're like having like a pissing contest to see who can show Mitchell Trubisky more love. Like, I don't even know what that's about. Mitch Trubisky was the second pick of the 2017 draft, and he was a bust in Chicago, you know what I'm saying? You're the second pick of the draft, you don't see a second contract, you're a bust. He went to go back up an elite quarterback for a year, and everybody's like, oh, my God, wow, Mitchell Trubisky. Like, Mitchell Trubisky's mid Mitchell Trubisky is the first round draft selected, juiced up version of the guy that we already have on our roster, Taylor Heineke. Another solid clipboard holding, but can hold the fort down for a little bit of time. Oh my God, it was all Matt Nagy. No, it wasn't all Matt Nagy. 
quarterback's allowed to throw touchdown, even if he's in a bad scheme or if he plays for a bad coach. Quarterback's still allowed to throw touchdown. Talk about a guy who's thrown for like 20 touchdowns one time. I know why everybody's guessed. I see people talking about he's going to get three years, 45 million. Like, God damn. Like, for what? For what? He stayed healthy his whole career. That's about his only feat. Whoa, he got them to the playoffs. Ooh, what did he do when he got there? He didn't show fight. He didn't show fight at all. Then we got Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz is better than Mitchell Trubisky and Jimmy Garoppolo, in my personal opinion. But are you going to really spend assets to acquire a guy who the Indianapolis Colts sent multiple assets for? Frank Reich's guy stuck his neck, stuck his chin out for this dude. And is already, after one season, willing to cut bait with him. If that doesn't scream red flags, if that doesn't scream lack of leadership, if that doesn't scream not a solution, I don't know what the fuck else you're looking for. So Carson Wentz, also an upgrade from what we have here. Good size, injury prone. I don't see the value in that. Teddy Bridgewater, I've heard him link to us. I I might throw up if I have to watch middling pedestrian as Teddy Bridgewater throw crossing patterns for 160 yards in one touchdown a week. Like I'm I can't I can't do I can't do that no more. We you keep saying take a big swing. A big swing does not always have to mean via free agency or the draft. We could also take a, we could trade up and we, if we fall in love, like I think the team loves Malik Willis. I think they like other quarterbacks too. I think they like Ritter. I think they like Pickett, but I think they love Malik Willis. If you love a guy, trade up and go get him. The Niners did what they had to do last year to get Trey Lance and didn't even play him last year. Trey Lance is going to start this year for the Niners. And if he's good, nobody's going to give a fuck what they traded to move up from 11 to 4 to get him, 11 to 3 to get him. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to, no one's going to be worried about that. Like, that's the big thing. Like, everybody's always like, oh my God, the draft capital, the compensation. Compensation does not matter if you win, if you see results. Everyone talks about the the RG3 trade. We gave the Rams all those picks and they didn't do absolutely shit with them. It just happened that RG3 was a bust and we traded all those picks for him. So we look like the stupid ones when ultimately no one won that trade. Nobody won that trade. None of the players they picked did anything. They had their little moment where they got to send them all out for the coin toss and taunt us before the game, but never did anything with them. But yeah, man, I think we should go all in, man. Go get our guy. Go get Malik Willis. Even if it's not Malik Willis, if you love one of these quarterback prospects, even if I disagree with the pick, who the fuck am I? I'm a fan. Fans will get over themselves. They will get over themselves because ultimately fans fucking cry about everything. Do what you got to do. If you love a guy, do what it takes to get him. It's not going to be one of the big name superstars. That would absolutely perplex me at this point. But yeah, man, the it, it, combine week is a huge week, man. We got players who need to start negotiating contracts. The big one, Terry McLaurin, our star receiver, who's played for a thousand quarterbacks in the three years that he's been in the league. He's on into his last year of his rookie deal. We definitely should get a deal done with him because he fucking deserves it because I don't even know why he would even want to be here. Like, I'm about to sign long-term to a team that hasn't shown me one time that they can give me a quarterback. But you know what? He's a good dude. He's a good, humble dude. He seems like a much better guy than me. So Terry probably is on board and probably with the shits to sign a contract. I think those negotiations are about to get going. J.D. McKissick, Cam Sims, DeAndre Carter. Let me tell you something about DeAndre Carter and Cam Sims. They both were better than we needed them to be last year and the year before for Cam Sims. If we let them walk, so what? So what? I I appreciate what you did. I appreciate your service. Deuces. We got to stop crying when we let these mid-grade ass players go. Like, sure, they did a little bit of producing for, like, they're like, oh my God, I'm just going to hate to see us develop Cam Sims for him to go elsewhere and be somebody else's number four receiver because that's what he's going to be. He's not going to go somewhere else and catch a thousand yards, 90 passes. He's not. 
If he was any capable of that, he would have already shown it in his career. He's not. It's not that guy. Not that guy, guys. Andre Carter, he was a hell of a story for us last year. Scored his first few NFL touchdowns, was the number one returner in the league. He was probably our best receiver in the slot last year. Very replaceable, though. Have you seen this draft class? Did you see those receivers fucking flying today, running 40-yard dashes? Come to find out, those hand times on the 40s were the Bishop Sycamore of 40-yard dash times. They were a little bit, you know, lied. We were lied to. We were deceived, hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray. But these motherfuckers were still flying, though. Don't get it twisted. It, was just, it wasn't as many 4 2 four threes as we thought. And we thought we saw the fastest 40 ever by Tyus Thornton with the 4 2 one. It turned out to be a 4 2 8. I wish Chris Olave's 4 2 6 was real, though. But I love that dude. He's a smooth operator, silky smooth receiver. He's going to be a problem. I know people are like, oh, let's get a receiver at 11 and then go. Bro, we got to. Our first fucking pick has to be a quarterback without a doubt, without question, and without any hesitation, because we're not going to solve that position in the offseason. We wanted it to happen that way. That shit's coming on April 28th when we're up to pick, whether that's 11 or we're trading up. Because if we love the guy that the whole league's falling in love with, Malik Willis, go get that motherfucker. Go get him. Don't even waste your time on it. Desmond Ritter impressed me today. He looked good. He looked sharp. Carson Strong, mm, not a fan. Bailey Zappi was sharp. Kenny Pickett was Kenny Pickett. Solid. You know? My guy, David Bell, one of my favorite receivers in the class. I don't know what was going on with him today. He ran like two high four six forties. The tape's still the tape, though. Don't let this 40-yard dash shit in the underwear Olympics try to tell you a different story than your eyes told you when you watched them play. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's, that's what Washington got going on, man. We're, we're, we're shooting shots. We're sliding in the DMS of every executive in the building because we want a quarterback. Like, I don't even know why people are confused. Like, why is Washington so desperate for a quarterback? You seen the last 20 some years, bro. Have you seen it? Have you seen what's been happening here? Have you seen the dreck? that we trot out at FedEx field to play quarterback for us, bro. You should be desperate. Ron going into year three, bro. We need results. We need results and we need to instill hope within the fan base. And right now that's going to have to be attached to a rookie because nobody's, nobody's trying to do business with us and nobody's available. I don't, we can't just force some laterally better veteran and try to set, like, bro, we're in the first year of a new brand. Bro, I'm sorry, you can't trot fucking Mitch Trubisky out in week one of the Washington Commander season. I don't like to look into schedules and strength of schedule because the NFL's parity is ridiculous and circumstances change year to year. So I don't really believe in the terms easy schedule, hard schedule. But as of today, March 3rd, 2022, we have the easiest schedule in the league next year. I don't believe that, though, because ain't nothing easy for a team that hasn't won shit in two decades. But on paper, we have the easiest strength of schedule in the entire NFL for the 2022 season. And <clears throat> if it is a rookie, that motherfucker needs to start because I promise you a rookie can do what Taylor Heineke did last year and do more with it because – they're going to be more talented than him and have more arm than him and be faster and stronger and see the field because you want to know why? Because then we're talking first and second round talent, not an undrafted XFL journeyman on the couch to get a degree talent. It's a whole different circumstance. So my thing is you can get a rookie and plan to redshirt him. If we get any of the guys I spoke about, the rookie's going to win the job. The rookie's going to win the job. I can see the rookie beating any of those guys, especially Malik Willis. The talent, that talent's not going to stay off the field for too long. You know what I'm saying? Especially if he picks up concepts and sees the field and his intelligence. You know, he scored a 32 on the Wonder Lick. That's one behind Brady, a couple behind Peyton, Rodgers. Elite stuff. I hate that people have to be so show. Wow, he's really has so much football intelligence. 
Wow, he has such a great personality. Motherfucker, we've been saying this. We've been saying this. Malik Willis is the dude, man. He's the dude of the 2022 draft class. I'll stand on it. You can bookmark this, screenshot this, all of that shit. March 3rd, 2022. Malik Willis is the dude in this class. If anyone's going to be a superstar in this class, it's going to be Malik Willis. Ten toes down on that way of thinking. What else we got? Oh, the stadium. <laughs> We've had stadium news since I've been, since my hiatus, you know. Virginia has rolled out three potential sites. I've been telling y'all Virginia's in the lead for the longest to get the stadium. Virginia's already put up over a billion dollars. Like, bro, we're trying to get this bill passed because we want the stadium. One of the sites being in Sterling <clears throat> with access to the Silver Line. And two in Prince William, which surprised me. I'm from Prince William. I'm from Woodbridge. One in Woodbridge and one in Dumfries. I think out of the Virginia sites, the one in Dumfries by Potomac Shores, I think that site makes the most sense for what they want to do. They're trying to create this big, <laughs> this huge dome community, commander's community with nightlife, an amphitheater, stores, complex, all that. They have the most space in Potomac Shores, and that's actually a really good up-and-coming neighborhood. I've seen the golf course over there. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. I know some folks that live over that way. And Barilyn threw their hat in the ring yesterday with a plan for like a FedEx Field 2.0. I don't know how that's going to work out, but I would I would just get away from that situation. And honestly, I'm a Virginia dude, so the selfishness in me, I, I, I want the Commonwealth Commanders, baby. Bring them on. I will gladly take a 10 to 15 minute ride to and from my favorite team stadium. But that's the selfishness in me. That is the selfishness in me. We got news in the NFC East. The Eagles seem to be committing to Jalen Hurts as their starting quarterback in 2022. I don't know if I buy that yet. He had a decent season last year. He got him to the playoff. I don't know if I buy that. With all that capital, I think they're the team to watch for Deshaun Watson because they have draft capital for days. For days. They could literally write Houston Texans a check that nobody else can. And if they want Deshaun Watson, they will have Deshaun Watson as long as there's some resolution to the court situation. I don't want to wish that evil on my side. I don't want Deshaun Watson in division. I'm I'm cool. Keep Jalen Hurts, please, Philly. The Giants. The Giants are considering – I mean, the Giants have put it out there that Saquon Barkley's up for trade with a fourth-round value on Saquon. I told you all when it happened – He's a freak of nature, but a running back has no business ever being the fucking second pick of the draft. For what? It's a running back, bro. That position already hard enough. The, the, the career span and lifespan of a running back is so short. You almost never need to sign a running back to a contract. Run the treads off them during their rookie contract. Draft, rinse, wash, repeat. Don't sign running backs. Don't draft running backs in the top five of the NFL draft. I don't like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like taking running backs that high in the draft. That's just my philosophy. They don't belong that high in the draft. It's a fucking running back in a passing league. Hell no. Hell no. I don't even want to draft Saquon Barkley or Christian McCaffrey on a fantasy team anymore, bro. And then we got Dallas, who looks like they're about to lose two-thirds of their very stout receiving core with Amari Cooper potentially being released and Michael Gallup as a highly sorted out free agent in the next couple of weeks. So shit is about to go down in these next couple of weeks. We're going to be hearing a lot of things come out because, you know, the tampering period in the new league year doesn't start to around the 16th, but teams tamper their ass off, man. They in, they in Indianapolis right now, letting the chopper sing, cutting deals, getting deals done, putting out, laying out the parameters and framework of contracts, trades, Trade up situations, trade down situations. If anything big is going to happen for Washington, we'll know by Monday. We'll know by Monday if some if there's a big move to be made or a big player to be made available. We'll know by Monday because they out there in Indianapolis doing a lot of talking, man. They they in the bars, they in the the suites at Lucas Oil Stadium. Everybody's out there for a reason. They out there to get shit done. And I'm excited to see the rest of the workouts. Today we saw the quarterbacks, running backs, receivers, tight ends. And that's my favorite day, obviously, because I obsess about the quarterback position. You know, like I said, Malik Willis, Desmond Ritter, 
stock up. Yes, good days for y'all. Kenny Pickett, stock about the same. Maybe down because people won't stop talking about him because he's Mickey Mouse because, you know, he has the two gloves. Two gloves, Kenny, and the smallest hands ever. Dude could play football. Shit isn't a big deal. But, yeah, man, that's all I got for right now. I'll come back and give you an update after each day of the position groups working out. The receiver group looks absolutely phenomenal. Christian Watson, the wide receiver out of North Dakota State, man. 6'4", running a 4'3", 40. My God, could you imagine that lined up opposite Terry? Can you imagine Malik in round one and someone like Watson in round two? Man, we got to get this quarterback situation figured out. Anything I hear, you know what I'm saying? I'll be back. I'm back to give y'all consistent content going forward. And I'm ready to see us make some moves. It would be nice to see us make a splash or two, but... This team needs to see results in 2022. And we need to kick off this Commander's commander's brand with a bang and a solution at the quarterback position. But that's going to wrap it up for today. Make sure y'all give my guy at WSH on the daily. Watch on the daily on Instagram a follow. Make sure y'all sub the account. We just hit 200,000 views on the account. I, on the YouTube channel, I appreciate you guys for liking, commenting, subscribing, sending a friend to subscribe. I appreciate it. Now, let's run it up another 100K, and let's get to 3,000 subscribers. I'm about 265 subscribers away. Let's get it. Salute and hail to the Washington Commanders, baby. Deuces.